Welcome to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson. For more than a year, the city of Durham has weathered concerns of racial profiling and bias toward African Americans by officers in the Durham Police Department. During this same period, City Council and City Administration have worked methodically to respond to the criticism and to determine the best ways to move forward to improve police and community relations. Here to talk about what has happened and what's next to move the community forward are City Manager Tom Bonfield and Police Chief. Jose Lopez. Welcome to you both and thanks, thanks so much thanks for joining me. Tom, let's get started with you. Would you please help our viewers understand how we actually got to this point and what transpired to lead up to the set of recommendations by the Human Relations Commission? S certainly, Beverly. Um, in the, uh, the summer of uh, 2013, uh, there were, uh, beginning in the summer of 2013, uh, there were several uh, unfortunate incidents involving the Durham Police Department and members of the minority community mm -hmm. that, uh, that, uh, that resulted in, uh, in, in deaths uh, as a result of uh, either in custody or, uh, or officer involved situations. Uh, that, uh, um, I think, uh, spurred on uh, some advocacy groups in the community who, uh, who were very concerned about relations between uh, the Durham Police Department and, and uh, the minority community uh, to, uh, to approach the council uh, wanting to express their concerns about uh, some disparities in, mm -hmm. uh, in policing. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the uh, statistics and things that they had done some research on were cause for concern. So those groups came to the council, uh, I believe it was in September of that year, uh, expressed concerns. Uh, and uh, basically what happened from that point <clears throat> is that uh, Mayor Bell uh, felt it was important that uh, there be a, an independent uh, review mm -hmm. of, of the, uh, the information uh, so he asked the, uh, the Human Relations Commission, which is appointed by the Mayor and City Council, mm -hmm. to, uh, to review uh, the information, take the time that they needed to ask questions, both from the city staff, from the Durham Police Department, and the community. Uh, so that led to uh, about a six or seven month process of which they were very diligently went through the information and in May of, uh, of, last, of, of this year mm -hmm. uh, made recommendations to the City Council as to uh, areas that they felt uh, that police community relations could be improved. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of recommendations, right? Right, there 40. were a total of 34 recommendations uh -huh. from the, the uh, Human Relations Commission. At the same time, there were 10 recommendations from the Civilian Police Review Board about mm -hmm. improving police community relations. So all in all, yes, 44 recommendations. Mm -hmm. The city administration took the summer to evaluate uh -huh. uh, and look into those, uh, those recommendations. And then in August of this year, we reported back to the council uh, as to uh, areas that uh, we had concurred with or we didn't concur with and the actions that we were going to take moving forward, working with the police chief, working with mm -hmm. the police department mm -hmm. to, uh, to address the concerns. And I understand you didn't make these responses in isolation. You consulted with a lot right. of Right. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the process that we used mm -hmm. uh, certainly involved uh, hearing from the advocacy groups uh, and their thoughts. Uh, it involved uh, communication with the Durham Police Department. Uh, it involved us uh, evaluating uh, best practices from around the country to mm -hmm. the extent we could. And then we also compared ourselves to peer cities in North Carolina to see how our practices were similar or different than theirs. All of that information is what ultimately uh, uh, was, was used to develop the, uh, the recommendations from the administration as well as the action steps moving forward. Now I want to talk about consent searches in particular, police stops and consent searches. What was the final recommendation uh, by you to council and why did you make that particular recommendation? Well, um, you know, this can get a little, a little confusing. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, our recommendation was that it was important that uh, consent searches be documented. Mm -hmm. uh, many in the community felt that uh, that documentation was best provided uh, by a written uh, document. Mm -hmm. uh, the administration felt that video or audio or written was, was adequate documentation, but mm -hmm. uh, after hearing from the council, hearing from the community, uh, the chief and the police department uh, came forth and said that they felt that uh, in order to, uh, to, to move steps toward improving the trust and relationship that, uh, that the written consent should be tried, rolled out, and I'm sure the Chief can address uh, how that's yeah. gone. Okay. So, Chief, how has that gone? I, I know it was implemented Well, in at this point October. in time, we have uh, the written consent searches both in English and in Spanish, and mm -hmm. every police car has uh, one of those forms that we're going to use uh, whether or not the individual consents to, to a search when asked. Uh -huh. And uh, we're also uh, making sure that the, all the officers are 
trained in re response to it. We're making sure that the cameras that are in the police cars are functioning and also their microphones mm -hmm. are functioning. So. so how are you going to make sure that people who are stopped actually understand their rights? Uh, at this point in time, uh, the officers will advise them that uh, they would have to sign a consent search mm -hmm. form uh, where the individual may not be aware of it, mm -hmm. where they may just consent and, and not think that they'd have to, to sign anything or write anything down. Mm -hmm. We're also going to go out into the community in order to uh, advise them whenever we're speaking to community groups mm -hmm. in reference to it. Uh, we've been feeling a lot of questions and also explanations on our website, things of that nature. I know also something interesting that came out of the report was the use of body cameras on officers. There are other police departments throughout the state that are looking at this as well, actually throughout the country. What are you considering and what would be some of the obstacles toward moving forward with this? Well, since the uh, advent of uh, body cameras mm -hmm. during the police department, we've been looking at this to see how it would fit our organization. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been interviewing quite a few different uh, producers because the technology is, is wide and far. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to, to identify a couple of uh, these cameras that we can test and evaluate. Uh -huh. Uh, right now, we're at the stage where we're trying to identify the, the two that we're going to evaluate, and it should be a 90-day process. And oh. then at that point in time, uh, depending on the outcome of that process mm -hmm. and cost, we'll start uh, rolling them out to police officers. Mm -hmm. We've been getting a, a mixed uh, response, but the majority of the response is very positive towards the fact that these cameras will not only help the police officers in explaining what they do to the mm -hmm. community, but also give the community added uh, sense of trust that whatever their encounter is, that it'll be recorded and they can refer back to it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a win-win uh, situation. We just want to make sure that uh, we get the right product for the city of Durham. Mm -hmm. How long would it take to actually implement something like that? Well, we're looking at uh, 90 days for the evaluation. Uh -huh. I think that's a reasonable period of time. Uh -huh. And then soon after that, putting together the financing, ordering it, and however long it takes. So to say that we're going to do it as soon as practical, is, uh, and I, I'm hopeful that we're into these cameras uh, by uh, 2015 very early. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tom, would you like to add anything? No, I think that that's exactly right. Uh, one of the commitments that uh, uh, we made to the community as a part of this, uh, this process was that the police department was going to move forward with this evaluation. Um, you know, my, my uh, direction to the police department is that they would report back to the administration uh, by the end of February or some time frame. So as we begin the uh, fiscal 15 budget process, we, mm -hmm. we have the uh, information about costs and, uh, and we can plan for that moving forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Tom, another complaint kind of hand in hand with the disparity in traffic stops is the searches of vehicles driven by African Americans as opposed to other races. I know that you're now requesting that the police department actually provide more detailed analysis of traffic stops. Why did you feel this was needed? Well, you know, it, it really is more than just the, the searches. It is all of the conditions for traffic stops. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the, the, uh, the things that we learned as a part of this process is there, there, there is a, a disparity uh, between the, uh, the number of African Americans who are stopped and then ultimately, uh, you know, who, are, who, are, who have consented to search uh, compared to, uh, to members, you know, the, the, the other other races in, in Durham. Mm -hmm. uh, those, uh, the, the reasons for that uh, are varied opinions. Some people move in the direction of, of you know, discrimination and racism. Uh, others, and then the police department, uh, you know, talk about how this activity is occurring in some of our highest crime areas and mm -hmm. in, in various. So rather than, you know, debate, uh, or debate all of that, we know there's, there is a disparity. It mm -hmm. may well be explainable, but up, up to now we have, we really can't explain all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so by uh, adding additional information to traffic stop data uh, that, that we haven't previously asked, I'm hopeful that we can uh, learn more about the conditions, the situations, the time of days, mm -hmm. all of the activities that were associated with a particular traffic stop, whether or not that traffic stop resulted in a search mm -hmm. so that we can we can use this data to better understand and explain mm -hmm. if there are disparities why those disparities exist. Mm -hmm. Chief, would you like to add anything to that? Oh, yeah, I think it is very important to mm -hmm. uh, really find out why the disparity is occurring mm -hmm. and then I think that'll get us a lot closer to addressing uh, disparity in the city of Durham mm -hmm. and uh, and looking at it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the whole issue of trust and transparency is so important 
and uh, you know we recognize that uh, that in many parts of our community there there has been an, an erosion of trust between the community and the police department uh -huh. the police department i know chief lopez is committed to restoring that i'm committed to restoring that and at the same time uh, you know, one of the ways we're going to rebuild that trust is with transparency about information uh -huh. and certainly uh, the transparency around this traffic stop data, mm -hmm. which we now have come forth and commit to report to the council and mm -hmm. to the community every six months, I believe is going, wh whatever the numbers show, whatever the, whatever the facts are about uh -huh. that, mm -hmm. we're going to be transparent in communicating that so that working together, you know, we, we, can, we can provide answers that, mm -hmm. uh, that people, you know, want to have. Okay, all right. And, and we'll be using all the software, all the uh, the data gathering that uh, didn't exist or we didn't have available to us in the past, uh -huh. and we're moving forward in order to, to get that, okay. in order to get that information out there. Okay. I know one other um, point that was brought up was racial sensitivity training, and, and you're moving ahead with that, actually. Can you tell us a little bit about how that's going? Yes, uh, we just went through uh, a training with uh, council members, members of the uh, city manager's office, mm -hmm. members of the community. Mm -hmm. And we went, uh, uh, I also attended. A and I have to say that everyone who walked out of there walked away enlightened and impressed. Our Recruit Academy class has gone through it. And every sworn member of our police department will be going through it now and in the future. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be coming, uh, we're looking also to see about bringing it out to the community at some point. Mm -hmm. And Beverly, you used the word, um, racial uh, sensitivity, sensitivity, but fair and impartial policing, is I think, the is, yes, is, is the, the official uh, is part the of the training. Mm -hmm. uh, program. The police department uh, you know, reviewed uh, various programs from around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, they found uh, Dr. Lori Friedel from mm -hmm. the University of South Florida, mm -hmm. uh, Criminal Justice Department, as one of the, the experts in the United States on this topic. Uh -huh. And we were very fortunate that uh, Dr. Friedel fit in her schedule to be able to to do the, at least the first two days of training. She yes. won't be able to do all the training, uh -huh. but it was really, really great that well, uh, she, she started that, kicked us off. Right, she Good. impacted the upper command staff uh -huh. uh, of, the, of the organization. And also uh, we uh, brought in representatives, uh, executive representatives from different police departments in the mm -hmm. region. Mm -hmm. And they're also looking to, uh, to get into the fair and impartial policing so that this philosophy, this training is not just in Durham, but uh, the entire area. We've come to our break, but please stay with us for the second half of City Life as we take a closer look at how the city is moving forward in addressing low-level marijuana arrest. We'll be right back. Welcome back to City Life. Joining me again to talk about how the City of Durham and the Durham Police Department are moving forward to build a better relationship with the community are City Manager Tom Bonfield and Chief Jose Lopez. Thanks to you both for staying with me. Tom, before we talk about community outreach efforts, I did want you to address a possible controversial recommendation to make marijuana arrests a low-level enforcement priority. What are the next steps with this recommendation? Thank you, Beverly. Uh, so the, 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 uh, the recommendation about the low-level marijuana arrest uh, as a low priority um, ha has been uh, somewhat controversial. It's very complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, the statistics actually bore out that the Durham Police Department already makes low-level uh, marijuana arrests a low priority, whether that's in, in, you know, in, in practice or just in, in results. Uh -huh. uh, but we also know that uh, there exists, uh, if we look at the statistics, a considerable disparity in low-level marijuana arrests between mm. the, the uh, percentage of African Americans that mm -hmm. are arrested versus the percentage of, of whites that are arrested, as mm -hmm. an example. So we need to understand that better. That, that's one thing. So going forward, the police department has been directed to, uh, to do more research and get into more detail to understand just wh where the circumstances associated with the, uh, the misdemeanor marijuana arrests that mm -hmm. have occurred over the last 18 months. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, we also know that uh, we are uh, constrained to, to ma in many respects by the laws in North Carolina in terms mm -hmm. of uh, what, what the laws are about marijuana possession and, and, and those kinds of things. So we don't have a lot of ability to, 
to, to deviate from that. Mm -hmm. But also we know that uh, it is the entirety of the criminal justice system that has that. to work together mm -hmm. to, uh, to respond or address to, to the concerns and the impacts along, in many cases, long-lasting impacts that low-level marijuana arrests have, particularly on young African-American males. So mm -hmm. uh, Mayor Bell has, uh, has begun convening a discussion uh, involving uh, the police department, the city administration, Durham County, the uh, courts, the di dis district attorney's office, the sheriff's office, all of the players, all of the components of the criminal justice system mm -hmm. to just begin talk about what are the options in this regard. Mm -hmm. uh, Mayor Bell doesn't have a particular course of action. There's not something that we're trying to impose. Uh, we're just trying to get a better handle on what are the options, what are the diversion options, what are the the uh, adjudication options mm -hmm. that might be available to try to, one, still be able to enforce the laws as we all have taken oath to do, mm -hmm. but also, uh, you know, recognize the uh, the significant uh, negative long-term impacts that uh, that occur as a result of that. Uh -huh. Separate from all that continues to be better understanding the, uh, the, the disparity question and the reasons for that disparity. Mm -hmm. Chief, what are your feelings about this? Marijuana. Uh, enforcement is not even on our radar. It's something that we come across in many cases, uh, the low-level uh, arrest. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's very important that we continue to work with the different uh, uh, disciplines in the justice system mm -hmm. in order to find ways to address this problem because it truly is the problem that's impacting our community. I know also a portion of the recommendations that were made actually involve community outreach and, and public relations kinds of efforts. What are some things that you're doing to strengthen police and community relations? Well, first of all, we're in the process right now of hiring a uh, public information manager mm -hmm. so we can coordinate a lot of our communications through all uh, media, both social and, and regular standard media, mm -hmm. so the community can be better informed in reference to what we do, why we do it, and also what's going on. At the same point in time, we're uh, pushing and promoting our Citizens Police Academy that just got done graduating uh, a class last Thursday. Mm -hmm. And we're also looking to see about getting people in the community who want to be part of our Citizen Observer Patrol. We're also working with the Neighborhood Improvement Services in order to enhance our uh, Partners Against Crimes and get the citizens to, to meet uh, with the Partners Against Crimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're also looking to grab whatever and any opportunity that we can in order to uh, not only uh, increase our minority hiring, but at the same point in time, see about getting more residents in the city of Dur Durham to be part of the Durham Police Department. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of things going on. Uh, yes, we do. Good. <laughs> that is really good, I think. Uh, also, I wanted to ask you, um, just frankly, it seems like the police department has been under a lot of um, pressure over the last year. What is morale like in the police department now? Well, with all this going on, one of my biggest concern has been morale. Mm -hmm. uh, has morale been impacted by this? Mm -hmm. I'd have to say yes. But uh, the members of the Durham Police Department are extremely professional, and I've got no doubt that moving forward, they're going to be acting in the best interest of the uh, city of Durham and its people. Mm -hmm. Do you th think this is, has uh, affected recruitment efforts? I think to some point it may have, but we're going to be working very hard to offset that mm -hmm. uh, and continuing our efforts, uh, looking towards other departments and also targeting some of our uh, recruitment efforts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tom, do you have any feelings about that? Well, I'm very confident with their professionalism mm -hmm. that they understand that uh, you know, the, these are issues that are concerned to the community, mm -hmm. and we take them very seriously. Uh, and we don't uh, take them personally, and uh, and you know, we, we want to uh, to be professional mm -hmm. and and do the things that uh, that the greatest majority of citizens expect be done for their for their safety. Mm -hmm. Another uh, area that received significant uh, review and attention was the role of the Citizens Police Review Board. Um, it seems as though there was some confusion about the role of the board and what it is they can and cannot do. How are you moving forward with that? You are right. There is much confusion about what, they, what the Civilian Police Review Board does and mm -hmm. what people want it mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. uh, in some respects, it's limited by uh, the, the state laws of privacy and those kinds of things. But also, this is a group of citizens who is an who is a interface between 
the city administration, uh -huh. the police department, uh, and the community. Uh -huh. um, so one of the things that we're trying to do is one, better communicate to the public just what is the Civilian Police Review Board's role, uh -huh. be very uh, more transparent about their, their activities and their, their actions. Uh -huh. We've covered a lot of area here and I know we're going to be um, generating a lot more reports as a result of the recommendations and the action reports. Um, where should our viewers go to get more information? All of the, uh, the, the manager's recommendations and actions associated with the 44 mm -hmm. uh, items uh, are posted uh, on the city website, on the city manager's uh, page, if, mm -hmm. if people go to the website. Uh, we will be updating that as uh, changes are implemented and as things occur. There will be links from that website uh, to reports that are filed, to the, uh, uh, the reports associated with traffic stop data or, or any of the uh, Civilian Police Review Board activities. Um, uh, again, uh, we, we want to be transparent, but at the end of the day, uh, people can pick up the telephone or send us an email if they can't find or they won't have questions. Mm -hmm. uh, we are committed, I know the chief is committed, to, uh, to want to uh, address the concerns, address the relationships that, uh, that uh, mm -hmm. in, some, in some areas are, are not where we want them to be, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and work hard to improve police community relations. Okay. Um, Looking back over all of this, it's been a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of community input. What is your final take on how all of this has ended up and where we're going? Well, quite frankly, as I, as I told the council, you know, I've never taken this as, you know, as a personal you know, problem or never you know, felt like it was an irritation. Uh, and as it turns out, I really appreciate that we've come this far, mm -hmm. that uh, the, you know, the, the concerns that were raised have caused us all uh, both the administration and the police department to look at things differently, mm -hmm. uh, look at things uh, you know in in a in a more thorough uh, fashion, and uh, and again I think there's nothing more important uh, that uh, uh, in a, in a community as it, as it relates to the trust between police and community for a successful community, mm -hmm. and if if this work. Uh, helps us improve that and get to a better place, uh, we're all better for it. Mm -hmm. Chief, would you like to add to that? Yes, uh, any and all organizations go through good times, they go through bad times, and the Durham Police Department is one that always looks and reflects on itself, uh, either whether we're doing something good or something uh, went wrong, so that we can better improve uh, the way we provide our service. Uh, this, I think, is a challenge that will continue. Uh, throughout the history of the Durham Police Department in the city and as it continues we will continue to adapt uh, towards the necessities uh, mm -hmm. of this community and the desires of this community as we move forward. Okay, so. great. Thank you so much for Thanks joining for me. Us. I know you both thank are you. very busy men, so thank, thank you, you again. All right, well that does it for City Light. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and watch us on Durham Television Network and on YouTube. I'm Beverly Thompson. Thank you for joining me to learn more about city life in Durham.